Sony, potter, swimmer, adulterer, legend. Mahawal, merchant, cowherd, adulterer, legend. The crucible of their life-destroying, soul-affirming love melts the dross of everyday lives. When Sony was born, the fates gave three gifts, beauty, artistry, and to love without measure, an overpotent trinity. Beautiful, but too early dead, gifted, but too early dead, beloved, but too early dead, immortal in song, music, and film, but still too early dead. Legends are comfortless things to those who are the stuff of it. Now here's a strange thing. The merchant Beg, later Mahawal, wealthy and married, was mad with love for Sony before they'd even met. Ensnared by her pots, the silken glazes, the sensuous female shapes. When he finds her, Mahawal, completely defenseless, cannot conceal the fire that devours him. Sony, disconcerted by this stranger whose burning gaze scorches her, does not respond. For her, there are no arrows or thunderbolts, just a deep unease. Dare we say it, he ever so slightly creeps her out. From merchant to mendicant, layer after layer, remorselessly peeled, wealth, status, Dignity, Mahawal barely notices the stripping down to the raw, vulnerable kernel of his being. But it is this pared down creature that Sony grows to love.
while people slept, Sony swam to her lover on the other side of the river. How could this be? How could these eager couplings, after exhilarating swims and feasts of roast fish, be the lightning path to divine love and freedom from earthly ties? The pot, deep-bellied, an ancient shape, as ancient as the earth from which it was shaped. It's the womb, its fertility and fragility. Sony, maker of these pots, will never make these symbols her reality, will never bear a child, although she pops the womb shapes again and again and again. Perfect boys, they keep her afloat on her midnight swims to meet her lover on the other side of the river. Until one desperate night, her sister-in-law, stealthy, watchful, deadly, switches spots. The indigo silk storm clouds, brocaded by gold lightning and silver sheets of rain, rode and flashed their warning. Even the moody Chenab River, unwilling to engulf her, asks the fish to tell Sony to turn back. Nature too, cold and furious, was reluctant to drown the slender, unusual, determined girl who swam while others slept. She gave them no choice, really, because she had none herself. If she turned back, she would betray love itself. So she swam while her flawed, treacherous spot wetly, grittily crumbled. Immersion, emergence, a perfect balance as the water pulls her under, inexorable, inescapable. Sony grows ever more composed, no flailing limbs, or gasping of ragged breath in a futile fight for life, but a serene cross-legged descent into the swirling, noisy river. Death is the honored guest, greeted with poise and courtesy, and Mahawal soon follows. River, flame, fish and pot, bubbles glugging in and out, all whispering the same thing, Sony and Mahawal are dead. The jealous sister-in-law is now custodian of the legend and like the ancient mariner, is bound to repeat it again and again to shrieve her soul and keep Sony and Mahawal forever alive.